All right, uh, I'm Raquel, and I'm going to be presenting calculus in medicine, especially in modeling the spread of epidemic diseases. Um, so what's an epidemic disease? Let's talk about like influenza. Influenza is three to five million cases of influenza per year. Um, there's about 5,000 deaths per year worldwide. Um, so calculus could help us with this by modeling um, like a sequence to know when it's going to be spread, who's going to get recovered, how many people. Um, so let's just stick with influenza. How is it transmitted? Um, pretty much airway, if I touch one, if I'm sick and I touch one, he'll get sick. Um, if he sneezes in Will's face, Will will get sick. So let's just have a little video of how um, influence is transmitted. Just to show you guys. That morning seemed like any other. Dr. Mickhead was back, having beaten the rap on murdering his spouse. Anyone want a cool prison jumpsuit? Dr. Kelso was having his daily staring contest with the last double chocolate chocolate chip muffin. Let's end this charade. You win again. You always do. Would someone explain what that bird is doing in my hospital? Sanchez appears to be flying, sir. I've named him Sanchez. He set up shop in that old wreath there. I'd take it down, but the patients around here really seem to love the little guy. That disease-infested scavenger is a serious health risk. Oh, do you know the number one cause of death in the hospital? Your breath? Infection. And you know how quickly infection spreads in a hospital? Your breath. That doesn't make sense. Uh, don't care. Look, infection can start with a simple sneeze. And then a handshake. Perhaps an accidental collision. Then a simple touch on the shoulder. And just like that, you have a patient in trouble. <laughs> I want that bird gone. <laughs> So you might be asking, how is really the common flu like linked to calculus? Well, if you remember in calculus two with these sequences, so pretty much we can do a sequence or like a model to figure it out how to control this flu. So who can we thank for this? Um, first, the first one to start anything with population statistics was John Grant. He was the first demographer. So he studied like statistical human population and everything. He was the first one to create a life table, which will tell you the expectancy of to live, like to live, to live. Um, so what year, like the, is the highest like that rate? Uh, what year is like the highest like I don't know like epidemics or whatever? Um, and he also created a book of the natural and political observations made upon the bill of mortality. Um, this was pretty much a summary of London, like the mortality rates, the birth rates, and everything. Um, the second person is Daniel Berdonli. He was the earliest mathematician. He actually um, did a lot of practice in smallpox disease. Like in 1966, in 1766, he did a research of how vaccinations could help us and how vaccinations will like um, slow down the disease and everything. And the last one is Ronald Ross. He won the Nobel Prize for this, his research on the spread of malaria. And he was the first one to create the mathematical models of how to control diseases and how they will be spread throughout the population. So pretty much our model, like what's the objective of our model? It will be to develop like a model to see the spread of disease in a fixed population, see the course of a disease, how many people are infected, how many people are going to get cured, how many people are immune to the disease already. So we need to assume some things. First, we need to assume that the fixed population is going to be in three categories. Susceptible is going to be the ones that are healthy and can catch the disease. Infectious can be the ones that are already infected with the disease but can spread it around. And recovery is going to be the ones that are recovered from the disease and are immune to get disease, the disease again. So for my assumptions, I'm going to get a fixed population. That means that everybody's equal. Everybody's going to be the same age. Everybody's going to be the same um, 
like the same it's gonna be healthy it's gonna be a boy or girl um and everybody has to get in contact with people the same number of people per day let's say we go to class two classes a day 30 people per class so 60 people per day something like that and that everybody has to be in that category at each time for example i have to be either infected and then i have to be immune to it but i cannot be like in between or anything so um, our stages are going to be susceptible, infected, and recover. And our parameters are going to be, um, B is going to be equal to the, number, the average number of days that the infection will last. Um, C is going to be equal to the average total of contacts per infected person. And A is going to be equal to the daily rate of contacts infected. That means that you just multiply B and C together. And N is going to be equal to the fixed population, the, no, the total fixed population. So our models are going to be the change in susceptible people are going to be the negative daily rate times the current susceptible people divided by the total number in the population times the current infected people. Um, the change in infected people are going to be the daily rate times the current susceptible people divided by the population times the, infected, the current infected people minus the average days times the current infected. And our change in recovery is going to be the one divided by the number of average days times the, infect the current infected people. So let's say just an example. Let's say 10 university students go to a foreign country for spring break, and, they all, and 10 of them come back infected with the cold. And they all have to be in different stages. It can be recover or infected or immune. Um, they, the, the cold will last 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 days. Assuming that the average number of contacts that we'll have is 60, two classes per day and 30 students per class, and let's say the population is 50,000 um, people in the university. So pretty much we have to know what the disease is going to do. We have to like control it, and we have to see how many days it will take for everybody to get immune, so everybody to get recovered, and when it's going to be the highest day, what day is going to be the highest infected people. So Right now I have an Excel sheet to just find out like the number of everything. If you could like remember calculus two, we did sequences in Excel. So I have here my total population, then my inverse number of B. So for to start with, if the total population is 50,000 and 10 are infected, that means that um, 49,990 are susceptible to the disease and just 10 are infected, and none of them are recovered. So just curiosity, how many days do you guys think it's going to take for everybody to get recovered from this disease? So everybody will die. No, oh, but well, that could be one option. <laughs> 25 days. 25 days? Anybody else? 15. 15? 15. All right, well, I thought it was 20 days, because I thought that it was like <coughs> 10 days after you get recovered. Let's say the last one gets recovered, and one more gets infected, so that would be 20 days. So I went ahead and I went and did the sequence about it. And day five, everybody, nobody's susceptible. Everybody's either infected or recovering. So after that, I just went on to day 10, day 11, and I stopped at day 20, that's my guess, and there were still people infected. So then I grabbed the data here and I did a formula for it in our graphing calculators. And I found out that it took up to 90 days for everybody to get recovered from this um, epidemic. So, um, here are the graphs. It means that by day five was the highest infected people and there was nobody um, susceptible to it. So then the recovery goes to a really steep stuff and then it goes down. That means that there's no more susceptible people, but they slowly are infected are going down, which means the recovery people have to go up here. And then go to the next one. And here are just the individual ones. This was our, the susceptible ones. That's six. There's no more. Then in day six, there's the highest infected people. And here, recovery has to keep increasing until we get to our 50,000 students that were in the university. So that's my presentation.